Alright, so if you have been scrolling through YouTube trying to find a video on how to actually create those perfect samples that you can send to different producers, well, I actually got you covered because in this video, I will teach you how to create catchy guitar samples all from scratch in FL Studio. As most of you probably know, we're not going to waste any more time, so let's just jump straight in. Alright, so we are now here in FL Studio 21, as you guys can see. And the first things first, before we start loading up any sort of instrument or anything, we need to pick a BPM for the project. So this obviously depends a little bit on the vibe of your sample, if you want it to be a little bit slower or faster. Now in this case, since we are trying to make a catchy guitar sample, I recommend going for a little bit of a slower vibe. So I'm thinking something like 120. Like I said, you can obviously experiment with the BPM, but in this case, I would recommend something in between 110 and 140. The next thing we need to do is just pick a guitar VST. And in this case, I'm just going to use my favorite one, which is this Nylon Sky guitar over here in Omnisphere. Now again, it depends a little bit on the vibe, but I'm going to break it down very easily for you guys. So if you are trying to go for a little bit more of that wavy type of sound for somebody like Gunna or Young Thug, I would highly recommend going for a nylon guitar like we're doing in this case but if you want a more emotional vibe for somebody like polo g i would actually try going for an electric guitar in that case and lastly if you want a more authentic and acoustic type of sound you should obviously go for an acoustic guitar now with all of that being said let's just open up the piano roll over here and let's pick a scale so to pick a scale you just want to go to view scale highlighting and in this case we're just going to go with d minor natural the key is actually to make the guitar pattern very repetitive but just add a few changes so it's not the same thing over and over again so i'm going to break it down to together with you guys. Since we are working in a D minor scale, let's just start off with the D minor chord. You create the D minor chord by just skipping one of the highlighted notes, putting the one note above it, again skipping the highlighted note, and putting a note above that one again. So the way I like making these repetitive guitar patterns is actually first of all going to the magnet tool over here and switch it from cell to third beat down here. Once we have done this, we can just highlight the top two notes and push them two spaces to the right. So we can do the same thing with this top one, one, two to the right there. All right, so that is going to be our first chord. Obviously, we're going to make this a little bit more realistic and we're also going to build up for this. But one thing you need to make sure before we actually move on, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you see the velocity down here, it's actually a little bit lower than usual. The reason for this is because you want to make sure your guitar patterns are actually played a little bit softer. This is just going to help the whole feel of your sample. And don't worry about the volume because you can obviously turn it up later on using some effects. Now that we have this first chord, I'm actually going to shorten it a little bit just so we can repeat it over again. Now we want to start making some changes over on these last two chords so the changes don't need to be huge or anything like that we just want to do a few note changes here and there just so we can switch up the vibe of the pattern while still keeping the same type of flow so the way i'm going to do this is just by pitching this a5 up one semitone and then we can also go to this f5 and pitch it down one semitone also make sure to extend the notes just so you have a more natural sound to your guitar vst and let's take a listen to the first part of our pattern So just to make that pattern a little bit more realistic, you want to hit Alt and R on your keyboard to randomize the velocity. This is just so the guitar is being played a little bit more natural. And then you can also go into your pattern and adjust a little bit of the timing over here. So you can pull some of the notes to the left and some of the notes to the right. Now that we have the first four bars of our pattern, we want to start adding some top notes to get some more movement. So since the root note is going to be D, we can start by adding some top notes above the D over here. So let us try using these half steps that are right next to each other inside of the scale. Just put one note down. Highlight it, hold Alt on your keyboard and move it slightly off grid so they don't hit at the exact same time. Yeah, that's a fire pattern right there. Alright, so we're starting to get a super cool melody for the first part. Now, like I said, we want to keep the same type of flow, but we don't want the same thing to repeat over and over again. So a super cool way we can actually change this up a little bit while still keeping the same flow of our pattern is just by copying the same exact pattern over. But on a second part, we can actually just pitch it down by either five semitones or we can pitch it up by five semitones. So in this case, let us just try pitching it down by one, two, three, four, five like this. Let's hear the second part right now. It's super smooth. Now the cool thing about this is that you don't even have to worry about the notes that aren't in the scale. They are still going to sound good as long as you have them in the scale on the first part right here. So now we have a pretty catchy guitar pattern, but it doesn't have the best sound to it. And the reason for this is because the guitar VST is super dry and we need to add some effects to it. Alright, so for the effects, I'm going to cover some of the more essential ones just so you know how to get a good quality sound out of your guitar VST. So the first thing you should add is going to be a reverb. You can obviously pick whatever reverb you like. I have the Rome reverb right here. I also know the Valhalla Vintage verb is very popular but just add a slight bit of reverb so you can really get some more ambience to your sound 
As you can see, it doesn't even have to be a lot, about 16-15%. Next effect we're gonna add is gonna be RC20. This again is just to get more of that vinyl and realistic sound to our VST. I like going for this vinyl 3 preset over here as it gives it the best sound. You can kind of hear that D tune as well. It really gives the guitar a authentic feel to it. Next is gonna be an EQ. Pretty st straightforward, just lower some of the low frequencies and you also want to remove some of the boxy mids as well. Alright, so the last things I recommend adding to your guitar VST is just going to be a couple of effects to enhance your whole sound. So I'm just going to add this J37 to add some more saturation to our sound. Then I'm just going to add an imager, putting the stereo separation to about 36 just to widen out the whole guitar sound. And lastly, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of noise suppression just to remove some of the noise in the background. So now let us just quickly take a listen to how the guitar sounds without any effects. And this is how the guitar sounds with the effects on. You can just hear it's a way cleaner sound. Alright, now that we have the whole main guitar pattern down, it's start to adding some more elements to our sample. Now, like I said, we want to make sure to keep this catchy and simple. So the key is actually not to add a lot of different layers. It is actually just to have a few layers, but very important and catchy layers. So let me just quickly explain what I mean by this. So what we want to do with this sample is just add a few instances here and there that we feel like could really enhance the whole thing. So in my opinion, right now we are missing a proper counter melody. We are missing some ear candy and we're obviously missing a lot of the low end. So that is pretty much just three essential layers we need to add to turn this into a catchy guitar sample. So let us try adding a proper counter melody first. Since we are working with a guitar, there are a couple of different instruments that I feel like sound amazing together with the guitar. This is first of all, obviously a flute that has become super popular together with the guitar, but you can also add a couple of vocals or a violin phrase. But before we actually go ahead and add the counter melody to this sample, I just quickly want to let you guys know that if you feel like you are learning a lot from these videos, I have actually released my personal producer master course which is pretty much a full course on everything that you need to know to become a full-time music producer. So I'm pretty much going through everything and I'm not holding any secrets back on this one. So in the course, I'm actually covering everything from mindset, loops, samples, drum patterns, how to create beats, full tracks. And I'm even teaching you guys a step-by-step -step process on how to actually make money as a music producer. So if it sounds interesting at all, you can just go on my website. It is bbmarco.com or you guys can just click the first link down below as well. All right, so with that being said, I actually did find this flu phrase and spice. So all I'm going to do with this one is first of all, just put it to stretch and then you can just press shift M on your keyboard or you can just press this button over here to go to stretch mode. Now for this one, I actually want to extend it out all the way for the full eight bars. And then I'm just going to try to add some simple effects like a little bit of reverb as well as some EQ to cut out a little bit of the harsh frequencies on top just to see if we can use it as a counter melody or maybe some accents in the background for our main guitar sample. Okay, so I think we're going to use this more as an accent. because it definitely has a cool vibe to it, but it's not really a proper counter melody. All right, so like I said, we're gonna use that flute more as an accent for a couple of different parts. And then I'll actually try to add some sort of vocal as our counter melody. But before we add that vocal, let's sort out the low end. So to do this, I think we just need to add a simple bass pattern. As for the bass, I'm just gonna use this popular bass over here in contact. And we pretty much just wanna follow the root notes of our main guitar pattern over here. So we're gonna start off by laying down one on a D and we can extend this out a little bit and make a more busy pattern over here on the end. So I think this is gonna work. So we get that low one from the bass. Now just to very quickly add some more ear candy to this, you can just drag in a random one shot and I'll show you guys a super cool trick you can do. So I'm quickly just gonna drag in a random one shot from my kit. Then you just want to open up the one shot and turn off loop points, but press the reverse button on. Then all you want to do is just lay down a simple two bar note on the root note from the guitar. Now this is going to give you a super cool reverse type of sound. Just take a listen. 
All right, so the last thing we're gonna do to the sample is just add those vocals we were talking about for the counter melody. With these vocals, you also wanna make sure to really drown out the whole sound. You don't want them to be too present because then it's gonna overtake most of the melody. We just wanna keep this a little bit low key in the background so it can act more as a counter melody. All right, so I did just add this vocal pattern right here and they seriously sound crazy. But the thing is the way they sound now without any effects, it really overtakes the whole sample. Just take a listen as an example. <laughs> So you can hear the sound fire, but it's too much. We need to add those effects to really drown them out. All right, so the first thing you want to do with the vocals is obviously just add a lot of ambience and reverb to them. So I really like opening up Valhalla Vintage Verb and going to the presets over here. If you go over to the Sanctuary presets, you can just pick the Spacious Vocal preset. Then you want to open up RC20, go over to the same presets, but this time we're going to actually pick this Magnitude Transition 1 preset. This right here is actually some serious sauce. It's going to give the vocal a whole different vibe. The last thing I'm going to do is just open up an EQ and I'm actually going to go with this Radio preset, but you can just make a similar envelope to this one right here. All right, now to really finish off the whole sample the last thing you should do is just add some effects on the master i'm first just going to open up a sound shifter and try to pitch down the sample just to see how it sounds if you pitch it down by maybe two semitones and then i'm also going to add some fresh air just to lighten up the whole sample a little bit now let us just quickly take a listen to the whole thing <laughs> this sounds crazy That's a catchy guitar sample for sure. Last section right here. Alright, that is pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys learned something new. As you guys can see, it's not really about adding a lot of different layers. It's actually more about having less layers, but making sure that every single instrument and every single layer is super important and present to the sample. Besides that, I just want to remind you guys that you can check out the producer master course using the link down below. It is currently on sale while I'm recording this video, so make sure to check it out if you're interested. Besides that, I just want to thank you guys so, so much for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time.